the World Championships, a lot of players really valuing that Aurora Veil here. Uh, putting that alongside the standard uh, sort of Tapu Koko, Arcanine, Celesteela, making sure that those Pokemon can stick around, basically amplifying the bulk of the, t of the Pokemon that Tobias has chosen, which are all very bulky, not going to see too many one-hit KOs here. Yeah, and the one thing I'd like to point out about Tobias' team, actually, is it is an identical six, of course, to the six that we saw Barris mm -hmm. running earlier in the day. As you mentioned, we've had a very strong German contingent, and they do work together on mm -hmm. numerous bases. So I'd be interested to see, of course, if Tobias has taken not only the same Pokemon, but the same kind of setup for them, the same item choices. And that's something that Wolf will have to try and figure out very quickly, because yeah. The item choices we saw on the variety of the team earlier, for those of you who have been following along all day, were so important. They really forced a certain playstyle. And looking over at Tobias's team, I feel the same way. Even if the items are a little bit different, there's a certain kind of pattern he has to take in all of these games with the Garchomp. When Wolf really, there's only limited patterns you can use against him. If he leads with something like Mimikyu, you need one of these defined answers against it to stop yep. it setting up. Those answers are so limited because of that fantastic disguise ability. All right, well, these players are excited to get into match, and so are we. Of course, Wolf Click on the right-hand side of your screen, the defending world champion up against Tobias Koshitsky on your screen right now. Tobias will be looking to most likely upset here, Wolf Glick. Uh, obviously, whenever you can pull a win on the defending world champion, that's a pretty good, pretty good start to your day. You would advance to 4-0 then. Uh, 3-0, rather. Yes, 3-0. And, oh, and Heading into to, round four. Tobias's wins have actually been two and ones today. Mm -hmm. Well, Wolf's have been two, two and O's. O's. So a little bit quicker. Wolf having a little more downtime between rounds to relax and, and catch up on the game. All right. Well, it is going to be the Arcanine and Snorlax leads and Tapu Fini. And uh, blocked a little bit by that Snorlax is the Toga Damaru <laughs> that Wolf has decided to play. Interesting choice here. The the plays with the big Snorlax to using the tiny Pokemon to make sure that maybe Tobias didn't notice Toga Damaru out on the field. Yeah, it's certainly one way to try. <laughs> and hide it. And with the potential threat of a high horsepower from the Snorlax, you probably want to keep it hidden from Snorlax, not by Snorlax. Mm -hmm. It's got to be tucked away. By the way, can I just address how great the German name for Snorlax is? Arcani. For Snorlax, Relaxo. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, Arcani. Yeah, that's pretty honest, really. Uh, <laughs> Togodomaru, though, doing something to the Snorlax, even though it was blocking it. Yep, just going for the fake out onto the Snorlax as Arcanine switches out for Celesteela. Uh, Wolf's Tapu Fini just going on the offensive with Muddy Water, which connects on both, and gets the accuracy drop onto Celesteela. Uh, you wouldn't think that that's such a big deal, but if it can make some of those Leech Seeds miss, then Celesteela is not as tanky as you might expect. Yeah, it really helps out against that Celesteela if it's not able to set up, which is something that's so important with a team like this. The Celesteela is the bulkiest point on this team, and mm -hmm. it very quickly becomes a focus point. The big thing here, I think, for Tobias is actually finding an opportunity to set up his Relaxo or Snorlax for our <laughs> North American viewers. You know, being able to set that up is a little bit harder when you're wasting a turn getting faked out. In that turn, you're also getting caught by a muddy water. It's really not the kind of play you always want to be against. And mm -hmm. now a little bit of Intimidate to try and help it out. Yeah, the Arcanine coming in for Toga Tomorrow just uh, just trying to get that Intimidate pressure as Tapu Fini is comfortable firing off these muddy waters, hitting both Pokemon again and activating Relaxo's uh, Berry here, healing right back up to basically full health there. No accuracy drops this time, and Celesteela is going to be able to get that Leech Seed off through the accuracy drop, start being able to recover off the health that it's been taking from that Muddy Water, while Snorlax uh, just going straight for that double edge onto the Tapu Fini to deal as much damage as possible. Not as much because of that Intimidate, though. Yeah, and that's really big. There's not been any setup mm -hmm. on the Snorlax on Tobias' side. So the attack was actually a little bit underwhelming, considering he's changed to double edge over yeah. the usual high uh, return or frustration, for example. You know, it does have other options, but that still, neither of them looking too effective there. The Intimidate mm -hmm. really paying off, I think, for Wolf and a very smart switch. The one thing he might want to look to switch out, of course, though, is Tapu Fini because Leech the Leech seed. seed. Yeah, it really starts to add up. And Tapu Fini's not doing big damage. He may want to save the Tapu Fini to try and deal with the Arcanine. Mm -hmm. And also, save it so he can set up Misty Terrain later if the Ninetales is in play. All right, well, it's actually going to be Arcanine switching out for the Kartana here. Uh, Kartana will be out on the field against the Snorlax, but not the Celesteela, which is going to switch out for Garchomp. Uh, some really strong heavy hitters out on the field for Tobias, but Tapu Fini is not afraid of them, is happy to just keep firing off these muddy waters. Gets an accuracy drop onto the Garchomp as well. And of course, the Snorlax is going to try and recycle its berry. Uh, Tobias, of course, we've seen all of his Pokemon are super bulky here. Of course, he's going to want to try and 
basically store or recover for later. Yeah, and interesting to see that the Garchomp is now benefiting from that Leech yep. Seed. Leaving that Tapu Fini in could start to be a problem for Wolf. I don't know if he's really in the mood to try and switch it out. Maybe he doesn't feel any of his switches are safe enough with these Pokemon on the field from Tobias. But Tapu Fini's Muddy Water is slowly wearing things down, mm -hmm. but the damage just isn't sticking because of the Berry, of course, on Snorlax, because of the Leech Seed now helping out that Garchomp. Mm -hmm. If that damage isn't sticking, is it really damage at all? <laughs> if, if damage was dealt but recovered, was damage ever really dealt? Something like that. It's a real conundrum, though, for Wolf, and something that you need to be dealing damage to take knockout. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty much oh, the way really? to win Oh, really? Is that how that happens? <laughs> it is. You, know, you win the game by knocking out your opponent's other Pokemon, and to do that, you need to deal damage. So you have We to might hope. need a trainer tip for that one. I think we do. <laughs> Celesteela is going to be out on the field now against the Tapu Fini and Kartana. Tobias actually just going to rotate all of his Pokemon out of the field. Arcanine now out, loves to be up against the Kartana, get that Intimidate off, but Wolf has just been showing a... Uh, a real tendency to leave that Tapu Fini in and Muddy Water, so could be very risky for the Arcanine to switch in here. Bloom Doom will be coming out from the Kartana, though. Yeah, Bloom Doom here. No good not, targets for not that. Not going to be a premium target left on the field. I think it would be likely looking towards that previous Garchomp to try and get rid of it. And another fantastic German name there. <laughs> We should, we should do all of these matches in German. The brilliant Blutenpranker. <laughs> <laughs> the Bloom Doom will target down the Celesteel, and as you can see, very little damage there. Not the kind of damage you want out of a Z move, but this muddy water from Tapu Fini is going to catch the Arcanine. That is what you want to see. Deals a lot of damage right back. Another accuracy drop onto Celesteel on the switch and, and on the Arcanine but the berry will activate for Tobias's Arcanine and the Leech Seed will recover a little bit more damage for that Celesteela. One question I'd like to ask about Wolf's Tapu Fini, of course, is why it keeps Muddy Water in. <laughs> We've now reached a point in the game where every single turn it's Muddy Water. Mm -hmm. and that could it's be been out since turn one, and every turn it's Muddy Watered. Yeah, it could be giving away a bit of its item there, maybe showing its hand, and the damage it's been doing is, is pretty significant there. The amount mm -hmm. of damage did to Arcanine in particular, even though the attack was uh, very, very effective, is a little bit more than you'd usually expect from a Tapu Fini. It's mm -hmm. often been a bulkier Pokemon. So looking like a choice specs over there on Wolf's Tapu Fini. That's something that Tobias is going to have to respect a little later in the game. But mm -hmm. most importantly in that turn, the Bloom Doom getting really negligible damage down. Very little value. Something that it needs to be thinking about, particularly in games two, or potentially if he goes through his first game three of the day. All right, well, Wolf is going to switch out Tapu Fini here uh, for his own Arcanine to get the Intimidates right back down onto uh, the opposing Arcanine and resetting the Leech Seed. So uh, Wolf will no longer be healing his opponent Celesteela. Uh, Snorlax, though, will switch in for Tobias's Arcanine, misses out on the Intimidate there, so that Snorlax is at full strength. Uh, so, it, But we are going to have the Kartana set up a substitute uh, to make sure that it can take anything from any of Tobias's Pokemon. And a substitute in front of a Celesteela and a Snorlax is usually a pretty good place to be if you're a Kartana. Yeah, this is a really good setup turn from Wolf. Getting the substitute in play means he can't get caught by the Leech Seed. Mm -hmm. If something goes for it with a, say, a potential Flamethrower coming off the Celesteela, then it's not going to get knocked out. And it may be able to start dealing damage back with something like the Sacred Sword, if that's what he's decided to bring with it. A very common move, of course, on mm -hmm. the Kartana with just two attacking slots. Keeping yourself safe from potential Arcanine coming back in is so, so important Absolutely. as well. And I feel that Wolf's just opened up a lot of board position for him. He's very comfortable to throw out attacks with Kartana and fish for a Beast Boost somewhere. Absolutely, and he will need a Beast Boost here with the Intimidate coming out onto the Arcanine. And the uh, actually, Arcanine only. Only because of the Substitute, which uh, the Delegator has uh, blocked the Intimidate, soaked that one up. Well, we are going to see the, uh, the, the attack onto Arcanine. Uh, while the Flare Blitz comes out from Wolf's Arcanine. Too many Arcanines out on the field. I can't follow all of the Arcani. <laughs> You've got to keep track of those Flamin Blitzes, <laughs> Evan. But a Double Edge doing pretty good damage, and I think that's why we see it go for it over the return. It's mm -hmm. just doing way more than you'd usually get out of And no Snorlax. Intimidate this time. Not only that as well, as it's not had any setup. We've seen a number of people, most of the trainers at the World Championships running that belly drum variety. We haven't seen a single setup move from Tobias this mm -hmm. time. And that's certainly interesting to see how that plays into his play style. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we know that it is a very bulky Pokemon with that recycle. So obviously you expect some sort of setup. The decision is really, is it curse or is it belly drum uh, with these Snorlax? Yeah, I think with the way it's been recycling, you know, it may be one of those slower ones with Curse, but Belly Drum isn't been ruled out. You do end up having to spend a lot of time setting it up, though. All right, well, both Arcanine are going to protect on this turn here. 
uh, while it looks like the Sacred Sword will hit into the Protect this time around from Kartana, and Relaxo will also hit into a Protect, so no dump damage dealt here because both Arcanine were the target and both decided to protect themselves. Very smart play from both trainers, knowing what they needed to keep safe. And a very interesting ball position here where both Arcanine are in potential range to get knocked out by something. On the other mm -hmm. side of the field, we saw the amount of damage that Wolf's Arcanine took from the Double Edge from Snorlax. And then in the same vein, we know that Kartana can deal a whole lot of damage. That's yep. its single role in most teams. Deal damage, take yes. knockouts. Get and those beast boosts. All of these switch-ins are going to be very, very risky, especially if Kartana's looking to set up something with the uh, substitute in play. Just looking for damage there. Another Sacred Sword into the Garchomp. Uh, takes a little bit of damage back from the rough skin through the substitute. Another Flare Blitz from Arcanine will be trying to deal more damage to that previous Arcanine slot is now Garchomp. Deals a little bit of damage uh, to the Garchomp. Takes damage in recoil and it from the rough skin. And Snorlax is just being allowed to sit on the field so far. Hasn't been too threatening uh, as of yet. Arcanine recovering up a little bit more with its berry. And we are going to see the double edge coming out from Snorlax onto the Arcanine. Gets it right back down to where it was before the berry activated. And Snorlax with the re recoil also going to activate its own berry. So basically getting that recover that it stored a few turns earlier while dishing out damage. Yeah, and if that Arcanine actually hadn't gone for the Garchomp and picked up some residual damage from Rough Skin. Mm -hmm. I think it would have got knocked out by the Double Edge. So very yeah. smart play from Wolf to basically activate his own berry. In this case, it is going to be, you know, the Pinch Berries. It's called the Margo right. Berry in this instance. And that really helps him, just keeping that Arcanine around, giving him the option to switch it out and bring it back in for another Intimidate, which against the two mm -hmm. Pokemon on the field would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you really want to protect that, that Arcanine when your opponent is using all of these physical attackers like Garchomp, like Snorlax. Uh, you know, even you know, if Celesteela is running something like a Heavy Slam, it's not irrelevant. Wolf is going to protect his own Arcanine this turn with a Protect here. Uh, no damage dealt from the Rocks, or the Earthquake, sorry, coming out from the Garchomp onto Arcanine. Just going to deal damage to the Snorlax and the Substitute of Kartana. Uh, but is going to be enough to break it at least. Yeah, that's really big getting rid of that substitute, but it does allow Kartana the f a time to set up and mm -hmm. get back another attack. Yep, a Leaf Blade into the Garchomp and also activating the Beast Boost here for Kartana. So we'll be able to get a you know another stage of attack uh, boosted. Did not take an Intimidate earlier because of the substitute. Uh, Tobias will be able to reset that with Arcanine in the back, but Snorlax, instead of going on the offensive here, is going to just take this turn to recover up, recycle the, the berry, and uh, be back right at full health. Yeah, well, Relaxo knew it was going to be taking damage from the Earthquake. Mm -hmm. So Tobias playing around that very, very wisely and getting that recycle in play. The big concern, I think, here for Tobias is that he is in a bit of a pickle with regards to this Kartana. It has set up mm -hmm. the Beast Boost, which is now meaning this Intimidate from Arcanine actually isn't getting any value out Just of it, back really. To neutral. It's bringing it back to neutral, and it's still in range to get knocked out, of course, by this uh, Sacred Sword coming out. Mm -hmm. That means that it would pick up another Beast Boost, and while he's going through all of these motions, you know, Snorlax is sticking around, but you have to wonder if Snorlax can actually start dealing a little more damage the time it's spent. Right recycling, you know, keeping itself around, attacking into protects, means that Kartana has this opportunity to set up the Beast Boost and then cleanly knock it out to end the game. Absolutely, and it'll be even easier with a helping hand. Uh, Wolf's Arcanine showing the power of friendship, helping hand Sacred Sword into the Arcanine. Kartana easily able to pick up that KO, activate its Beast Boost again, and no more Intimidate on Tobias' side means this one will stick. It looks like we are going to have another double edge coming out from Snorlax, finally picking up the KO onto Arcanine, which means Celesteela feels a little bit safer here. Uh, but still, getting the Beast Boost on Kartana, you never want to see that little Origami Steel Pokemon get rolling. No, that's a real big problem. Now he doesn't have the Intimidate to try and reset it. You could see so much damage coming out from this Kartana. We do, tomorrow. Mm, we do know, of course, that Tobias is down to his last two Pokemon. So he has mm -hmm. the option right now with Toga tomorrow to try and get another knockout with the attacks we've seen from this Snorlax, we've seen Double Edge. Mm -hmm. We know it likely carries high horsepower. If it had something strange on it to try and do a Kartana, I think it would have shown it off by now. Absolutely. And with that in mind, you have to think that the combination of Toga Tomaru alongside Kartana could just keep getting Beast Boost in play. Not going to try it this turn, though. Nope. Just going for the super effective Sacred Sword onto Snorlax. Uh, not enough damage here, but the Zing Zap from Toga Tomaru is enough damage to pick up the KO onto Celesteela. 
Uh, both players extending the hand for the handshake. Seems like Tobias knows that this game is over. Does show the high horsepower on to Togedemaru. Is going to get the information that Togedemaru is holding a focus sash here. Important when going into game two, but Wolf Glick, really well played set there, able to just you know, maneuver himself around the board here, making sure that his Pokemon were always in an advantageous position. The damage from Tapu Fini getting some of those accuracy drops, which didn't really come into play, but may have factored into Tobias' decision making, really felt like Wolf was always just a little bit ahead of Tobias this game. No, it really didn't. Even though he started it off slow, once mm -hmm. the ball got rolling, I felt he just got himself in a much better position. That substitute on Kartana, yeah. very, very helpful because he avoided the first Intimidate from the Arcanine. Mm -hmm. That forced Tobias to switch it out. And even though he didn't capitalize on it that turn, the fact that Garchomp was in play meant he was able to Leaf Blade it for a knockout. Absolutely. Then when Arcanine came back in, the Beast Boost nullified. And it was a lot of pressure on the Kartana to keep the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. We did see the Snorlax. As you mentioned, it spent a lot of time setting up not a lot of time attacking. It didn't even really spend any time setting up. It spent a lot of time just getting its berry well, back keeping and itself around, yeah. We didn't see any curses. We didn't see any belly drums. We just saw double-edged high horsepower and recycle there. Uh, so Tobias either deciding not to bring a setup uh, Snorlax, which would be incredibly surprising, or just deciding that he didn't right. have time, or, his, or if he is using a non-belly drum Snorlax, that his setup was too slow for this game. It really was interesting to see, but if you have a belly drum Snorlax. I feel most players are inclined to use that early. Mm -hmm. The way we've seen it played over the course of the tournament is belly drum is essential to the numbers. Right. They only get the knockouts after the belly drum. So I feel with that in mind, the fact he was actually attacking, also the fact he's using double, double edge. edge over in return, which would get it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to be doing 100% damage and then taking recoil off it. That just yeah. seems a little bit too much. A little risky. <laughs> a little risk and tackle <laughs> is what you need in that case. So. Very interesting to see what that fourth move is. I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe Curse. Mm -hmm. And you really think Curse could have been a lot more helpful there because Curse would have helped against the Kartana, against the Arcanine, even against the Togodomaru. Mm -hmm. Just limiting that damage, forcing the only real damage of the four we saw at least to come from Tapu Fini. Yeah, but Tapu Fini still got out a lot of damage. We were wondering about it because it was Celesteela and all the other Pokemon were recovering it off pretty well, but even just being able to pop those berries, make sure that uh, Tobias loses some recovery, a lot of damage was dealt by that Tapu Fini. I think if we look, went back and looked at the stats, Tapu Fini may have dealt the most damage that game. It, it dealt the most damage, and, and like you say, I'd the most berries, forced recycles. That's something that Wolf really bears in mind, and now he's seen how Tobias Ooh. plays with the recycle. It's going to be interesting, but a little change up from Wolf in the beginning of game two. Yeah, game two, Wolf has decided to go with the Mimikyu and Snorlax combination here, while Tobias is going with his own Snorlax and the Arcanine. So Wolf showing at least uh, the option of going into his Trick Room mode this time around. The Intimidate from Arcanine is uh, suboptimal uh, when you're running a Pokemon like Snorlax, but uh, the Belly Drum variant is pretty easily able to just uh, wipe those away. Yeah, that'll be really easy to set up if he wants. And we know that some Mimikyu also have options. I don't think this one does if it's the same one he was running yesterday. Mm -hmm. But Intimidate, really something that Tobias is relying on this game based on the fact he's already taken Arcanine out of the equation. Absolutely. Tobias is clearly uh, predicting that this is going to be a very slow game here, sending in the Celesteela uh, for the Arcanine. But we are going to have a taunt coming out from the Mimikyu on Wolf's side. Uh, blocks the, the curse there from the Snorlax. Yeah, so finally seeing that fourth move, he didn't actually reveal it in game one, but mm -hmm. Wolf knew something was there. Yeah. Getting that taunt down with his Mimikyu, very, very smart indeed. I think it was a really interesting uh, first turn from Wolf there, showing the Mimikyu and the Snorlax, basically baiting Tobias's Snorlax to go for the curse to counter a Trick Room. No, that's And then just so stopping smart. it with the taunt. Yeah, and now if he feels the need to set up Trick Room, if Wolf actually has curse of his own, then that would be fantastic. If not, he could play the Belly Drum, mm -hmm. then look for that kind of speed tie and just do more damage, simply yeah. put. If he sets up with a Belly Drum, he'll be in a much better position to deal damage because every single turn he deals more, even without the Double Edge. All right, well, the Double Edge coming out from the Snorlax on Tobias' side will connect with Wolf's Snorlax, uh, and we are going to have a Belly Drum coming out from Wolf's Snorlax. So uh, Wolf showing that he is going with the much more offensive version of the Snorlax here. Cuts its HP in half, maxes out its attack, and then recovers it all right back with that Figgy Berry. And it is going to be the Trick Room coming out from Wolf's Mimikyu. Another name that's just better in German, the Bizarro <laughs> Realm. Bizarro Realm. I enjoy that a lot more. <laughs> Interesting to see, though, Wolf feeling pretty confident there that he's going to be able to 
get that setup that he mm -hmm. needs, and that his Snorlax is actually going to be moving before it could be a time. Yeah. Many of them invest in no speed and actually run a nature that reduces their speed even mm -hmm. more. So that'll be really interesting to see how that one kind of pans out over the next couple of turns. Celesteela not getting any time to set up there, mm -hmm. also a big loss, because that's something that may have helped Tobias get through this Trick Room. After the Belly Drum, Snorlax is going to threaten both Pokemon on Tobias' side of the field. And even though it's not the biggest threat to Celesteela, Mimikyu's pretty good at dealing with that. Yep, well, Wolf is showing off his frustration here. One hit KO on the enemy Snorlax, really showing off the power of the Belly Drum uh, right away, while Celesteela has to go for that Heavy Slam to pop the disguise of the Mimikyu. Uh, Mimikyu, the saddest animation in the game, just uh, can't hold its head up any longer, but will be getting a taunt for its efforts, so Celesteela not going to be able to stall it out with the Leech Seed, just has to keep going on the offensive. Yeah, not going to be able to Leech Seed or Protect as well, mm -hmm. and that's a big one that taunt blocks that a yeah. lot of people seem to forget about. So no stalling Trick Roam. With the Snorlax in play, of course, it could just go for that slot. Deal a lot of damage, we've seen it do way over 50% as well. Mm -hmm. And then there's no safe switch. Yes, there's an Intimidate, but I just don't think that's gonna help against Belly Drum boosts. Yeah, that Arcanine is gonna need to come back, leave, come back in about five more times for and then it to you be get relevant. It neutral. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can Belly Drum again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's the way to do it. But at least it's something, you know, it's something that can actually protect this turn. Mm -hmm. And with Celesteela not able to protect, you can just see Wolf double targeting it really doesn't look too afraid of the Arcanine, mm -hmm. or he may be in a position to try and set up a little bit with that Snorlax by adding a Recycle to it, getting another Berry into play. Yeah, well, Wolf is just going to continue to play a little bit defensively. That is how Wolf likes to play here, switching out Mimikyu for Arcanine, uh, positioning himself very well on the board against Tobias's Arcanine and Tobias's Celesteela. The frustration will hit into the Protect, so no damage coming out from Wolf's side this time, but Celesteela forced into this Heavy Slam with the Intimidate, also really not doing much damage at all. Wolf setting himself up in a very good position to maximize this trick room with the uh, Belly Drum Snorlax. Yeah, that's what he really needed. Is seeing the Celesteela stay in means that the Arcanine and Snorlax combination are the premium mm -hmm. pairing to try and deal with it and really force that nothing can come in safely in that at all. A, mm, a failed double protect. Yeah, unfortunate for Tobias, not able to get the double protect here. The frustration is another one hit KO. Wolf just showing off the power of that uh, that Belly Drum Snorlax here. The Flamethrower will connect with the Snorlax, deal a little bit of damage, but not as much as this Flare Blitz from Arcanine is going to do on Celesteela. Uh, Tobias, I believe I saw him shake hands with Wolf. I believe he knows that this one is over, and Wolf is looking like he is in a, like he is on an incredible hot streak right now. He really, really is, and with that Arcanine going down, as soon as he lost that, he knew that the next turn, of course, his Celesteela can't protect. The Snorlax mm -hmm. can just pick it up there. And he really doesn't feel like he has the damage to try and deal with this. So even though Garchomp's in play and would be able to maybe try and swing things, I think with the Trick Room up, that was so, so essential for Wolf. Yeah. It's four Pokemon to two, and he just keeps this streak running. I believe that's a mm -hmm. collection of five yesterday, another <laughs> six, so ten there, another six from this morning. That's 16 games undefeated yeah, in this 16 tournament. and 0. That's how Wolf wants to be defending his World Championship. Absolutely. This is this is his house right now. Yeah, and people have been coming. You can't into disrespect it. the champ. You really, really can't. I mean, round one of yesterday didn't go his way, but since then, I think that fueled him mm -hmm. to really stake his claim as why he's the world champion. He seems pretty confident in his team and the tweaks he's made. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of result you want as you come into the end of day two. I mean. Already got those three wins under his belt. Only a couple more to go. Absolutely. And as both players are uh, chatting away happily, the game has resolved. And Wolf Click, 2-0 and o victory. Another 2-0 and o to his collection. Is now 3-0 and o moving on into Swiss round.